Okay, so we have our game. Uh, so we can move left to right, up and down. When we press left, right, up and down. Uh, now what we want to do is uh, we're going to work on the main loop a little bit because when you uh, when you press your left, right and down keys, you'll notice a little delay until it starts moving in that direction. So the way we get around that is, and most problems uh, that you'll have with making a game, is the main loop. So we're going to create a new sub, private sub, main loop. And now this is where everything's going to happen um, recurring. Uh, so every time uh, the screen updates, we're going to make it go back to the loop again and repeat what it's just done. We need to add a handler, uh, which means uh, we, when something triggers, when something happens, it's going to run a particular sub. Uh, so what we're going to say is composition target. And there's only one one handler in here and it's called rendering um, and then we want it to run address of main loop okay so that means every time the screen is rendered in other words you see everything that's happening in the background you see all the updates that it's going to run this loop everything in between here okay so actually uh, the the main need for that is so that we can say every time it, every time the screen's rendered it's going to do this again and it's going to move our objects around the screen uh, but that means that we can't uh, use if the key's been pressed we, we can't start moving the image around we want that to happen in our main loop but we still need to have something to detect if a key's been pressed so what we're going to add is a few variables up at the top and we're going to call the first one uh, right key pressed we're going to use this as a boolean, true or false, uh, so we can check a NIF statement later on uh, to see if the key's been pressed. And we're going to do that for right key, left key, up key and down key. And this just basically just gives us a bit of space to populate these values whenever we want. Okay, so now if we add a bit of code into the main loop to say if up key pressed you could say equals true but there's no need for that because it's true itself uh, then we'll take our up key code uh, so if if up key press is true then the image will move up uh, but on our key dot up event that means we need to define up key pressed equals true okay so that means that if the up keys when you press the up key it will change that value to true uh, which means this will see that as true and then move the image up but also obviously when you take your key when you let go of the key uh, if you come into here and go to the key up event uh, that'll create a new one for you and this one is going to say the same as this down here basically because that's that's the key that has been sent if the key that has been moved up is up in other words you've let go of up then we're going to say up key pressed equals false okay now i've done this then if the and then statement a little bit differently i've not put an end if on it it's because if you put all the code in the same line it has no need for an end if it knows that all of that line uh, is going through the same is, is going through the same if statement okay so when we press up now then that should move our image up straight away and when we let go of it it should stop it so let's just see how that looks for just the up key for now and then we can compare it to the other keys and see how it looks against them and obviously you'll see that the main loop is being called continuously okay so I'm pressing up. You see when I press right, I press right now, it moves a little bit and then it keeps moving. When I press up now, instantly starts going up. And you can see it judges a lot there when I'm pressing down and right. But when I press up, it's a lot smoother. Okay, so we're going to follow the same technique for the rest of the keys. So I'll pretty much just copy that. Paste it down there. Two, three, four. Down key pressed left key pressed right key pressed okay so up is minus four down is plus four we'll take it off of these two 
and then obviously these are the left and right keys so left should be minus 4 and right should be plus 4 so essentially we're going to be doing the same thing we're just making it a lot smoother but our main loop is going to be used for pretty much everything in the game so uh, now we just need to change these values in here to say right key pressed equals true here left key pressed equals true and down key pressed equals true now remember also you'll need to do the same thing if we just copy that code you'll need to do the same thing but say it's no longer true in other words say it's false uh, when you take the key up so when the key comes up uh, then we need to say left key press equals false if the key is left that came up and the same for the rest of them Okay, so now let's see how that looks. Okay, so I can move around. And another thing you'll notice is I can now move diagonally by holding right and up at the same time. That's something you wouldn't be able to do just by having the key handled. Now, when um, also, on, as part of a main loop, you may want to put a sleep in there as well, or you might want to also time the time it took for the last frame to go through. In other words, if uh, the last frame takes uh, a, th a thousandth of a second to run uh, and render back to the screen, but the next time it takes two thousandths, two thousandths of a second to run, then that means it will... Um, run twice as quick on the frame after which means you'll get a lot of judder in again so what you might want to do is you might want to times this instead of saying minus four or plus four you might want to say put some, put a time in there to see how long it took for the last loop to take and then um, calculate the distance you want to move based on the last loop uh, so that should keep everything nice and smooth for you um, another way of doing this as well is um, having a a timer in there, a dispatcher timer that calls on this and maybe or maybe at the end of your loop you might want to just do a sleep at the end of it. Now either method work, works fairly well but uh, sometimes the sleep, if you do a sleep uh, it can just make life a little bit easier for yourself really later on because you don't have to time every object's movement uh, by the by the speed but obviously it's just all down to your preferences whichever, whichever you're more comfortable with doing.